in Europe, because of survival, we had to develop a, a communications uh, department and strategy and the leaders gave support in the early 90s. There was a lot of meetings and the leaders kind of woke up to the importance of communications because of the necessity. So I was just saying that unfortunately in the past a lot, but even to the present, communications is mainly seen as an emergency department when there's when we're attacked, when there's problems in the media or with governments or with other, you know, or like now, for example, with attacks in Bangladesh. So it's, it's much more, it's, it's seen as a reactive kind of uh, effort. And we're trying in the communications ministry uh, with Anutama and all the devotees uh, around the world is to, to, to make it into a very systematic activity of our movement, not proactive, 90% proactive and only 10% reactive. But we have the tendency to be 90% reactive and only 10% proactive. So we, we want to, to switch that because proactive means you will be ready, you will have the relationships, you will have the context, you will have the vision, you will have everything that it takes to, to help the movement go forward in its, in its activities and its, its, its mission. Reactive means you're always doing patchwork, you're trying to help solve an emergency here and there. And there. Yes. So, so I remember I had done the communications course with Anuttama Prabhu. So it was quite a paradigm opening experience for me because generally the thought was that we interact with the world to preach to them and to make them devotees. And if they're not going to become devotees, then what is the point of spending time with them? But the idea was that what I what struck me at that time is that oh, there will be people, some people who will become devotees. But we want that those who don't become devotees should also be favorable to us, not hostile to us. So broadly, yeah, if, I understand, if I remember right, communications, one of the purposes is to, to create a receptive atmosphere for Sankit, our community. Sankit and friendly. Sorry? Yeah, Sankit, Sankit and friendly world. Sankit that's and that. friendly world. Okay, it's beautiful. So, yeah, it's, it, but basically, it's, it's, yes, we, we want everybody to be favorable to us, even if they don't become devotees, which is 99.999% of the population in the world. But, but, but specifically, communications department uh, focuses on the leadership of the, of the world, it means the political leadership, the media, the religious leadership you know, the academics and, and Hindu organizations as well, because they have the keys that, to open many doors that will make our preaching much more successful, that will make our activities much more successful. If governments close doors, if, if the media closes doors, if academics close doors, if, if all these leaders close doors because of perception or, by, or because of things that we have actually done, then makes our preaching much more difficult. So we need to have good relationship with these persons. They have to ap appreciate our, our, our message, our integrity, our, you know, and that's what we're doing in communication. We're trying to, to build bridges and relationships with many, many different people and organizations that will help our, our what we're trying to do in the world, you know, our, our mission. Oh, okay. So, so communications is not just, say, when we have some newsworthy events, we have some press conferences, have, have some reporters coming in and doing the coverage. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's having working good relationships with, with you could say, the, <coughs> with the opinion leaders of society or the opinion shapers of society broadly. Opinion shapers yeah, as well as the I mean, people in power. Yeah. Media, is an important, media is an important aspect as well. So we, we definitely want to have good relationship with the media. Now you were saying, yes, something happens and we do a press release. That's, that's a specific event. Yes, we have to do that. But in order to have the media cover your, your press release or your event, it, it's much more easy if you have relationships with them, if, if you have an ongoing relationship with them, if you know, if you know who the journalists are, if you, know, you know, if you can contact them. If you have to start from scratch, it's much more difficult. So, so even for media, it's important to build relationships with them so that we can, you know, we can count on them when we have, like now, for example, we don't have so much media relationships here in, in, in Belgium, and we're, we sent out tons of press releases yesterday to the French-speaking media, Dutch-speaking media, English-speaking media for our demonstration of tomorrow and Sunday. We hope that they will cover it. We hope some will come. But because we don't have, we have you know, we don't have the infrastructure, the, the, the resources to actually actively uh, cultivate them or have relationships with them ongoing, 
then it's like starting from scratch all the time. It's much more difficult than, than having a, a strong communication department that has an ongoing relationship, not only with political leaders, but also with, with, uh, with the media. So media is very important, as you said, you know, it's very, very important.